Previously on Taken. Do I? To us. Us. Do you know what you're gonna name her? Allie. Her name is Allie. I want you to join me in the program, Mary. Your grandfather found this in Pine Lodge, New Mexico. Found it at a crash site. So it's all true. This is something that shouldn't go outside the family. What's this, Allie? That's my journal. I write down things I think of and stuff. We need your help, gentlemen. You'll stop playing games and tell us everything you know about whoever it is who's out there and what the hell they want. Mr. Miller has an implant. We're monitoring it. The implant's broadcast on a spread spectrum. We block those frequencies. The implant doesn't register. Will this work on Allie? We can block her frequency, too. And they can't find her. Let's pick her up. She can manipulate time. You know that therapy group her mother's in? We have someone in that group. Put your gun away, Ray. You don't want to do this. Put the gun away. You know who's in there, right? Besides the little girl? Her mother and her father, Charlie. That means he knows. And that's two people with a lot of information that have had some pretty bad experiences with us over the years. They have to go. Dr. Pensler, too. What are you doing, Allie? Look at me, Dad. Get away! Take the little girl! It's a trick! Run! Come on! I'll take care of you. Come on. Where did they go? Miss Crawford. I'm ready to go with you now. I guess I always knew that there was something different about me. But when all of this began to happen, when I started to be able to do things, it was kind of scary. Like in a dream where you start falling, and it feels kind of good, until you begin to wonder if you'll ever be able to stop. It was a good trick. You're a very complicated little girl. What do you mean? I mean, with what you can do, you could have walked out of that building. Why did you let us take you? I wanted you to leave my mom and all the other people alone. I was afraid you might hurt someone. I thought if I went with you, they'd be all right. Control 17, we've lost two hours. What? We've lost two hours. Are you all right? Look, what I did, I'm sorry. I... It's okay, I'm alive. Look, we're all alive. Everyone, get out of here. Don't go home. Find places where you're going to be safe. Allie? Get out of here. Go. Allie! Go! Allie! 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 She's gone. She's not here. W where did she go? Where did they take her? My daughter, please. Oh, no. Allie did this. The time. All of it. Allie gave us missing time? Yes. She. She stopped time. She stopped us. She stopped us and let time keep moving. She wanted to keep us safe. And she did that. She needed the missing time so that she could go with them without us trying to stop her. She was trying to keep us safe.
I'm coming. I've been worried sick. I went by your apartment four times. I kept calling. What happened? Are you all right? Allie's gone. just be the beginning. Your grandfather wasn't a very happy man. Why are you trying so hard to be like him? Yeah, we're almost to the airstrip. We better get this thing in place. I can't see anything at all. Uh, Lisa. Uh, uh, Lisa. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Can you see me now? What happened to you? I don't know. I was somewhere else. I was somewhere else and Wherever it was, I couldn't see a thing. She's always been a... She was a real good-looking baby, you know, right from the start. And really smart. At seven months old, she was already playing peekaboo. I've got a video at home. They're taking her first steps. You should see that. I'd like to. We've always had this link, you know, a uh, connection. I, I've always known exactly where she was, what she was thinking, how she was feeling. I'd go to pick her up at school. I'd stop off to get Tylenol. She'd walk out of the building with a runny nose and a headache. Sounds silly, doesn't it? I mean, every mother has that. No, they don't. Man, I'm really, truly sorry. This cause Allie's blessed, right? I mean, these people, they took her, they want to know what she's all about. Yeah, pretty much. Well, we'll do whatever we can to help you get her back. I've got a couple of shirts around that'll fit you. Over the years, a girl winds up with a souvenir or two. Allie left this in the park when she ran away at soccer practice. Twelve hours ago, there was a bullet in my lung. I should be dead. Why doesn't it surprise me that you're not? She's just a kid. She didn't ask for any of this. She shouldn't have to do any of this. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. We'll get her back. How? When you've done something that you can't take back, something that you don't understand, you start to hold tightly to the things you do understand. And you try to make sense out of everything you can, as if you believed that all you had to do to make things right was to find a reason. But what happens when you find the reasons and they are not your own? How do you find any comfort or any sense in that? chance to talk. What do you mean? About your father. There's nothing to say. Well, you did what you had to do for the project. The project? When I was a kid, every time he went out of town, I used to imagine a car wreck, something like that. Just how much better our lives would have been if he were gone. 
been inside a craft. Many times, yeah. The one in Groom Lake. That was beautiful. Wasn't it? Yeah. That was my family legacy. Craft, Audis. My grandfather's legacy. My father squandered all that. He had it right there in the palm of his hand and he let it all slip away. Well, he couldn't stop them. He could have tried. You don't feel any remorse, do you? Do you think that makes me a bad person? You did what you had to do. About your father. Sorry for your loss. It's a terribly unfortunate mistake. A mistake? You got the girl? She's inside. So you really believe that thing you put on her head is blocking her signal? Right now they're in their ship, scratching their little gray heads, going, Where's our girl? And the moment we take that shield off, here they come. And you're confident we can take them down? Wherever they come from, the most distant star, the furthest reaches of time, the moment they enter our time and space, our reality, they're confronted by the laws of our physics. You're yeah, sure of that? In 1947, in Roswell, New Mexico, a ship came down when it collided with a mogul spy balloon. A balloon, yeah, I'm pretty damn sure. You don't find job. We're indebted to you. I'd like to thank you on behalf of your country for your contribution to this effort. You've done your part, Miss Scruppert. Little girl's part of a military operation now. We'll take it from here. For three generations, my family's been preparing for this. I've dedicated my career, my life, to this. And don't think we don't appreciate it. In a matter of days, we may be able to set foot inside one of their craft to meet these beings. To find out what this has all been about. <laughs> if you think I'm going to stand by while you take that opportunity away from me, you're out of your mind. You don't really have a choice. You've been benched. Go sit down. Grab some pine. What I'd like you to do now, I'd like you to clean up the mess you made in Seattle. The doctor, she's a liability. Marginalize her. And the little girl's parents, put them somewhere until this is over. Don't want them stirring the pot. We have people for that. You mentioned your father's death was a mistake. Some people spend the rest of their lives in prison for mistakes like that. Stay out of my way. You can ride with me, Doctor. Brief me on the way. Uh, excuse me? We need your expertise. I'm not giving you a choice here, Doctor. Come on, let's go. Now.
And Milo and I, we drove everywhere. We asked people in diners on the highway and in gas stations, and we got guys from every band we know doing the same thing. Nothing. What about taking this public? They're not going to come after you with the whole world watching. I called Channel 4 News. I said that my daughter had been kidnapped by a super secret government agency. They, they said I should call the police. I told them I didn't think that would do any good. They gave me another number for Highline West Psychiatric Hospital. We put an ad in the New York Times. That's how Lisa gets in touch with her uncle. Tom will be calling us soon. I'm cold. Shouldn't be much longer. Thank you. Lisa? I'm scared, Charlie. I'm very, very scared. How powerful is this little girl, Doctor? She's demonstrated powers beyond anything we imagined. She can manipulate time. She has amazing abilities to scream and to project images from our minds. Just how powerful is she? The question you should be asking is, why is she letting us take her anywhere at all? Dr. Wakeman is out of range of this cellular device. Please leave a message. General Beer's office. This is uh, Mary Crawford. Can you reach the general for me? I'm sorry, Miss Crawford. He's not available. Tell him I have some very important new information that he's going to want to hear about. We had come to the time I had always known was coming. I would always had this feeling that one day I would have to do something very hard. I just hoped that I could find a way to do it without anyone getting hurt.
How you doing in there? I'm all right. Can I ask you something? I heard that you let them take you, that you came right up to them and said you'd go with them. Uh-huh. I also heard that you can do things, kind of like magic or something. Is that true? Yeah. So you got all that power. Why didn't you just stop them? I was afraid they'd hurt other people. You're one brave little girl. I don't feel very brave right now. Hey, maybe later I could come back with a book or something. Did you ever read Huckleberry Finn? No, I never have. Well, I've got my copy in my duffel. I always carry it with me. It was my mom's favorite book. She'd bake us Toll House cookies, and then we'd share the whole plate of them while she read. If it wouldn't make you too sad to remember her. I'd like to hear the story. No, it wouldn't make me sad at all. It'd be nice to remember her. We're calling the operation Dropping the Dishes. The three Humvees equipped with the missiles will be here, here, and here. Camo nets above them. The target, gentlemen, will be in the air. It will be big. Observation posts here on the mountains for early warning. Two men to each OP. We're going to try to take this thing down intact, sir. That's the plan. Once we get it down, sir, how do we find these guys? Uh, Y'all have seen the S2 briefing video. You know as much as I do. All right. They can do some pretty incredible things. They've taken people through walls. They can make you see things that are not there. But no problem, right? We're the best. Look, y'all are about to fight an enemy the likes of which no soldier has ever seen. I can't tell you how it'll go, but I can tell you this. You're about to earn a place in history. Completely normal. No fluctuation in brainwave pattern. Nothing in her blood chemistry. Her biology is human. Of course it is. We won't find anything. The part of her that isn't human is capable of perfect mimicry. Then what are we looking for? I don't know. Any questions? Is there anything we can do to maximize her cone of fire, sir? I'd aim for the center of the damn thing and pray. Any other questions? Uh, General? General? I, I need to talk to you about the little girl, Allie. Something wrong? Her, uh, her powers are just beginning to manifest. Uh, we need to protect her for further study. So you're uncomfortable with the notion of using her for bait? <laughs> well, let's not think of this then in terms of fishing. In fishing, you put a worm on a hook, fish bites the worm, takes the hook. You're right, the worm's toast. But this is hunting country. So think of her more as a, a salt lake. Yeah, buck comes up to the salt, boom, shoot the buck. No harm at all to the salt lake. <laughs> uh, General, I, uh, I think there's been a miscommunication here. A miscommunication, really? I, yeah. See, um, my understanding of the plan, and uh, I did design the plan, um, an explosion is to be detonated above the craft. The effect is to bring the ship down intact. We're not trying to uh, bag a buck, as you so elegantly put it. We're trying to collect specimens for the zoo. Well, my orders are to take down that craft and to replace the craft in the bodies you people lost. And if possible, to take the occupants of the craft alive. And if not, well, we'll have more bodies to study. <laughs> This is an opportunity to communicate with beings from another world. We're on the brink of the single most important moment in human history. As far as I'm concerned, Doctor, we're at war. These beings are taking our citizens against their will. They've invaded our airspace, our lives, and even our gene pool. Now, these are unparalleled acts of aggression. We're at war here, fighting an enemy we don't understand at all, so 
I'll do whatever I have to do. You guys think these things will do the job? Uh, you men are outclassed, out equipped, and probably on number. Plan A then will be for the missiles to do their job and take these things out of the sky. Plan B would be for you to stick your head between your legs and kiss your asses goodbye. There is no plan C, gentlemen. <laughs> you know about all the things they do? The probes and stuff, man? I hear they show you stuff that'll rip your brain apart. I heard one of these came down in Nebraska two years ago. Took a squad and wiped them off the face of the earth. I think this is some sort of training exercise in psychological warfare. See how we deal with an impossible situation. You saying there aren't any aliens? That's what I'm saying. You've all seen the S2 briefing videos. I saw the alien autopsy video, too. Dude, that was awesome. I look more real than any of our stuff. I met this guy once, Special Ops. He had to debrief these two Marines that were taken right through their barracks walls. Showed up a couple hours later with scars all over their bodies. They were never right again after that. See, it's drug tests. Chemical warfare, something like that. We're not fighting any aliens. We're like lab rats being tested. OK, you don't think we're going to be storming a flying saucer? Now? Try to get my head around it, but no. I think this is some very deep, weird zone of don't ask. Either way. We're toast. Get up! Get up! Get up! We got this thing about roaches, all right? <laughs> and this is the man who's going to save the world from the alien menace. <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> they judged it was him anyway said this drowned man was just his size and was ragged and had uncommon long hair, which was all like Pap. But they couldn't make nothing out of the face because it had been in the water so long. It weren't much like a face at all. They said he was floating on his back in the water. They took him and buried him on the bank. But I weren't comfortable long because I happened to think of something. I know mighty well that a drowned man don't float on his back but on his face. So I know then that this weren't Pap. This isn't getting too scary, is it? It's good. I like it. I remember I would picture that river. When I imagined it, it was all kind of dark and mossy. Trees hanging down and stuff. Not like those pictures you see of Tom and Huck fishing. Oh, I'd get so scared. But I liked it, too. And my mom would get under the covers with me and read these parts. She was nice, your mom. Yeah, she was. My mom, too. My mom's great. You want me to go on? Yes, please. We played robber now and then, about a month. And I resigned. All the boys did. We hadn't robbed nobody. We hadn't killed any people, but only just pretended. We used to hop out of the woods and go charging down on hog drovers, women in carts, taking garden stuff to market. But we never hived any of them. I appreciate that, Colonel. I, I just thought with the history our families have shared over the years, you could give me an off-the-record location. Uh, yeah, I understand what need-to-know basis made you jackass. <laughs> Need your help. Come in. Please come in, sit down. Close the curtains.
You don't have to worry. No one's coming here. What do you mean? I work for them, Charlie. I was the one who called them. You told them about Ellie. Lisa. Just tell me where she is. Please, Harriet, tell me where they took Allie. I don't know. I've tried to call them. All the numbers I've been given, they're all disconnected. I have no way of finding them. We trusted you, everyone in the group. We put our trust in you, and you betrayed it. They told me I was helping. They, they told me they had proof that people who had been taken, people like you two, were in greater danger than they knew. I thought I was helping. You thought you were helping? You told them Charlie was here? You told them Allie was with us, and now they have her! Lisa, I am so sorry. I want you to put me back under. Ali and I, we have this link. Yes, I believe that's real. In regression, I've had those moments where I feel Ali, where I get that sense of knowing where she is. Yes. I've been experiencing things like that again since they took Ali. I keep getting this sense of knowing where she is and what she's doing. It's very strong. Uh, I want you to help me find her. We'd have to go pretty deep. We've gone there before, but, but frankly, Lisa, I'm a little over my head here. Can you help me get there? We're dealing here with something that I don't fully understand. It, even if I am able to access it, it... Uh, Hypnosis of this sort can be very dangerous. Are you sure you're ready for that? I'll go wherever I have to if I can get my daughter back. You have to do this for me. You owe me that much. Most of the fights people have are about something simple. You want something the other person has, and maybe they're afraid you're going to want it and they go after you first. People always think that if they win, then that's the end. Everything will be all right from then on. But everything changes. And tomorrow, the thing you were fighting for will just be a memory. Like everything else that's already happened. They're ready to take the shield off, Doctor. What we're going to do is extremely delicate. It would be easier for Lisa and me to find a way in if there wasn't anyone else in the room. It's all right. And a third deep breath. Now, I want you to go to that place where you and Allie find each other. And so we would lay an ambuscade, as he called it, and kill the lot and scoop the things. He said we must slick up our swords and guns and get ready. Okay, I'm gonna take this thing off your head in just a moment. Now, it's, it's not very bright in here, but it may hurt your eyes at first, okay? Okay. Now what do you see? Darkness. All I see is darkness. I think you make out something. There are people watching. It doesn't feel good. There are all these people. Wait. 
waiting for something to happen. They want something. They're... they're waiting for something. Do you know where you are? It looks like a hospital. But it's not... It, it smells kind of moldy. anger here and a lot of fear. Lisa. Lisa. Charlie? I don't know if they're gonna get what they want, but I know they're gonna keep her. They're gonna keep her until they get what they want. So what happens now? We wait? How long should we wait? <laughs> I don't know. You believe they'll come? Absolutely. But then again, I believe a lot of things. He threatens to become a major pain in the ass. If they went for Dr. Pensler, they'll be coming for you next. I don't care about that. All I care about is finding Allie. Where is she? I was with her in this room. It's, uh, it's a room. Uh, bare walls, peeling wallpaper like a farm. Why a farm? The way the room looks, um, feels, uh, something on the wall. L license plates old uh, rusted license plates and a calendar with a picture of a tractor on it. There were all these people. A man I saw the time they tried to pick me up. There was someone in uniform. You said there were license plates on the wall? Yeah, old ones. What state? Let me think. North Dakota! North Dakota! That's a start. North Dakota in a farmhouse doesn't exactly narrow it down that much. Wellington's Feed and Grain. W Wellington's Feed and Grain! The, 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 the calendar on the wall! That was the name of the place! North Dakota? I, I don't know what city. The listing is for Wallington's Feed and Grain. You're sure? Nothing. In the whole state of North Dakota, there's nothing. Ask yourselves, what would Maddie Hayes and David Addison do? And they say that watching five hours of TV a day for 26 years is a bad thing. us to see and nothing more your government knows this gulf breeze exeter dayton real i love this guy he believes in everything things. the scary part is All how often he comes close years, to the truth our government has been involved in a massive conspiracy to cover this up call me and tell me your story 
This is William Jeffries. Talk to me, and I'll talk to you. Oh, hi. Uh, this is Teresa from Pocatello, Idaho. And I just have to tell you, I'm so glad you're here, because I was abducted last September. And it's I tried time. to talk to everybody about this. I tried to talk to the government. I, I called there. I live on bad coffee and stale orders from the vending machine. Just outside of Brinsmaid. Program worked. Thank you. My mother used to sing to me a lot. Folk songs mostly, and things she'd like when she was a little girl. There was this one song called Further Along that always made me feel better when I was sad. Further Along will know more about it. Further along, we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When you get to wondering too much about things, a song like that can really help a lot. When we find her, she's going to want that. She'll be glad you brought it. Thanks for the book. Well, I figured now that you had that thing off, you could read it for yourself if you wanted. I was kind of hoping you would keep reading it to me. Uh, sure. I mean, I'd like that. Me too. Can I ask you something? Sure. Are they really going to come and get you? I don't know. Probably something like that. Well, that sure will be something to see. four months run along, and it was well into the winter now. I'd been to school almost all the time, and could spell and read and write just a little. You can say the most you Just before it gets dark, when the light still hangs in the sky. The day's not quite gone, well, all it's promises nope. still in your Seventy-five. Uh, I had a place up in Brinsmaid. I used to stop in on the way back from fishing with my boys. Good prices, quality products. It's a couple of young folks like you doing asking about a store that went under when you were still in diapers. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, nothing lasts forever, but those moments keep forever. You didn't mention that it was an old calendar. Sorry, my supervision's a little rusty. We're gonna find her, Lisa. You going to Brinsmaid? Are you from there? No, we're visiting a sick cousin. A Brinsmaid's been evacuated. You'll find your family member at the gym of the high school in Leeds. Evacuated? Why? Toxic spill. A truck collided with a train. What kind of spill? And they don't tell me. They just tell me to kick cars out. You're not afraid you're standing down wind or something? You folks turn around and do like I said. You'll find your family member in Leeds. Yeah, move along. Let's go.
Okay, so where are they? I mean, they took that thing off the little girl's head last night, so... Where are they? I was in Afghanistan last year, and this was all we did. Sit around and wait. I mean, come out and kill me already, I don't care. Just don't make me sit here and think about what might happen. You would have been lost at the Alamo, my friend. If they weren't in that siege, I would have been the first one over that wall. <laughs> so what's the deal with the little girl anyway, these pairs? I mean, you've been with her. She's special. Well, what's so special about her? You just have to be in the room with her. You guys are gonna think this is really weird. Pierce, we're in a field in the middle of nowhere waiting for a flying saucer to land. How weird could anything you tell us be? I've told you guys about my mom. What a good cook she was, the cookies she used to bake. <laughs> I think we have heard the tale. My mom died in 1998. And you start to lose them after they die. Your loved ones. I mean, their memories just start to fade in your head. I don't mean events. I remember birthdays, picnics, everything like that. I mean your actual mental picture of the person. I'm reading to Allie, just helping her pass the time. She's just a scared little kid. She misses her mom. Just like I miss mine. The book I'm reading is something my mom used to read to me. It's just like my mom's there with us. That's all I'm trying to say. And you attribute this somehow to the little girl? I'm just saying you have to be there with her. You can't put it into words, but if you spend some time with her, you'll get it. I can promise you that. Sorry about how all this worked out. You guys want to go hunt in a couple of weeks? They should have that spill cleaned up, huh? <laughs> well, there was no toxic spill, I can tell you that. How the hell you know that? Because I worked that railroad 19 years. You know what they haul on those lines? Lumber and steel. Nothing but lumber and steel. Now, I'm up there at Cranberry Lake with Michael and Tony. And I'm trying to explain a little of my philosophy of life in the woods. A couple of fellows up from Grand Forks, desperate to kill something before the weekend is over, and well, I'm trying to explain that that's not really what hunting's all about. It's just a story that goes someplace, or this just do his meaning of life, part seven. The point is, the three of us are sitting around the campfire, and I'm explaining my philosophy, and this Humvee pulls up. A bunch of soldiers get out and tell us to head on back to civilization. On account of a spill. A toxic spill, if there had been one. They might have told us to evacuate the area and then gone about their business. Not this bunch. They just stood there. The whole time it took us to strike camp, and then they damn near followed us all the way out of the woods. Excuse me. I'm looking for Mr. Blake. That's him? Thanks. Thank you, Randall. You're Mr. Clayton? Oh, that, that'd be my dad. I'm Dewey. We'd like to hire your services. Oh, you're looking for a guide. We were told that you're the best. And you two want to go hunting? In a way, yes. Well, you're out of luck. We're shut down. The damn government's locked us out of our own woods. We know that. But you've got some reason you want to go up in there anyway. Why don't you step into my office? Now, what have we got out in those woods that you two are so anxious to go hunting for? Our daughter. She's lost in the woods? No. It's... The army has her. Would this have anything to do with that uh, toxic spill that didn't happen? Yeah. And your daughter, you say?
Most of that gear back there belongs to a couple of young killers I had out this morning. I promised to ship it to them so they could put it in storage. Sure don't think they'll be back. I'll just sit in the garage with the Exer cycle and the cross-country skis and the racquetball rackets. Might as well put it some use before then. I'm pretty low tonight. But you get in them sleeping bags right away and survive. There's only one farm out this way. Nobody's lived there for 25 years, so if they're keeping anywhere around here, that'll be the place. Now, I take out all kinds of folks. Hunters, what have you. It's a lot of different game up here. If I'm looking at grouse, well, then I have to go in with a whole different setup than if I'm looking at deer or elk. Now, you don't have to be in a rush to tell me anything, but at some point, you're going to have to let me know just exactly what it is that I'm going to be looking at. No. Oh. Just bend these and give them a shake. We're not going to do anything to her, Lisa. She's too important to us. Williams, you asleep? Not anymore. Yeah, Keel's got the night watching the little girl. He's gonna let us in to take a look. You in? Yeah. All right. We were just kind of wondering. What the big deal was. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I'm important to the... Do you guys call them aliens? Yeah, usually. Okay, the aliens. And your general figures they'll come get me. We kind of know that already. How come you're so special to them? They're my other family. What do you mean? I'm part of them. For real? But you just look like a little kid. Maybe they're not as different as you think. 
can I ask you something? Sure. Are you mad at them? But you'll fight with them just the same. That's our job. Grown-ups are weird. Thirty-six hours. Nothing from Cheyenne Mountain, nothing from Norad, nothing in the sky. Damn it. I knew this whole thing was a bust. I'm a four-star general. I've been serving my country for 30 years. Now I'm sitting in the middle of old McDonald land with a nine-year-old girl. I'll tell you one thing. I want to have that squirrely-ass Dr. Wakeman served up on a platter for this. I'm not going to be the only one taking this fall. You want to tell me what the hell went wrong? Well, you got a theory, don't you? They're up in their craft worried about this girl. And as soon as you take that thing off her head, they're gonna come swooping down. Well, we could have been mistaken. But that's big of you to admit it. <clears throat> General, uh, we're talking about aliens here. By definition, their motives, their behavior, everything about them would be alien. So how much longer do we wait? Well, that's entirely up to you. What's up? Five-letter word for idiot. This whole culture is built on a fear of death. No one wants to talk about it. Everyone wants to pretend it's not going to happen. That's how come you get those vegetarians springing up all over the place. If I don't eat the little darlings, then they're never going to die. <laughs> Nonsense. Neither one of you's ever been hunting, am I right? Well, I went out with some guys once when I was maybe 14. They were living in Wisconsin. I, I didn't like it. It made me feel terrible. Well, you're supposed to feel terrible. That's a part of it. Understanding what it costs for you to stay alive. We better keep moving. As it is, it'll be dark before we get to where I think we should be going. Must be something special. How are you? I'm all right, ma'am. What you got up there? Some sort of toxic spill, ma'am. Uh, is that what they told you? Yes, ma'am. You're gonna have to let me through. I need to see General Beers. Do you have clearance? Do you have any idea what spilled up there? No, ma'am, I don't. You need to let me through. I have important information that General Beers is expecting. You're not gonna let me through, are you? No, ma'am. I didn't think so. Well, <clears throat> look, next time I'm just gonna run through the roadblock, so why don't you arrest me? What? Arrest me and have someone take me to General Beers. No one goes in. We detain people here. Okay, well then detain me and get General Beers on the phone and let him know that Mary Crawford's at the gate with some important new information about the project. I can't do that without provocation, ma'am. Oh, I see. <clears throat> How's this?
they're not coming, are they? I told you she was powerful, right? Maybe they're not that worried about her. Maybe they think she can fight her own battles. You don't know when to quit, do you? At the roadblock, you told one of my soldiers you had information for me. I lied. You son of a bitch. What did you think, that I was just going to let you take the project away from me, you and the general here? <laughs> you bastard. You sold me out the first chance you got. Worthless bastard. Put her somewhere where she can't hurt anyone. Creep. It's a warm thing, right? They know how to hold a grudge. This idea that he could do dangerous things because they needed him, that they'd keep him safe. Oh, they took care of me more than once. Because they needed us to, uh, <laughs> to get together. Because they needed Allie. Exactly, so they're not gonna let anything happen to her. We don't know that. They're not gods, Charlie. No, but they've got us outclassed enough so they can act like gods. We don't know what they want with Allie. We don't know why they did this. The odds are they didn't go through all this trouble just so they could hand her over to these people. I think she's going to be all right. I'm going to find Allie, and I'm going to do whatever I can to help her. I'm not going to rely on them for anything. I need to speak to Miss Crawford. This is for Miss Crawford's ears only. You can wait over there. Yes, sir. You peeked, didn't you? <laughs> My grandfather found it at Pine Lodge. At the crash site. I never thought your dad was all that bright. It can be very effective when a stupid person lies to you. I found some papers with these images on them when we moved out of Groom Lake. I asked your dad about them. He gave me nothing. I stood there with your father and told him I was wrong about the body from the Roswell wreckage being the transmitter. I told him there had to be something else. He just looked at me like he didn't have a clue. I mean, <laughs> you got to admire that. Mary, I have to go with him. I couldn't let all this happen without me. You understand? Please, I, I would have done exactly the same thing. I know. This is it. This is the transmitter. This is how they send the implant signals up. And your father had it stashed away all along. That thing's a lot more than a transmitter. You see these engravings, these inscriptions here, whatever you want to call them? It's fascinating. You don't know the half of it. Along this edge here. These markings are the same as the ones you saw in these rubbings from 1947. But on this side, on this edge here, this is all new information that was not there before. It, it gathers information? Now we know why they left it behind. It's been documenting this whole experiment. How long ago did you take off the shield? Day and a half. Nothing's happened. Yeah. Well, we've got this, which is clearly important, and we've got the little girl. 
It'd be interesting to see what would happen if the two were brought together. It'll be dark soon. We can make that happen. Bathrooms around here. We go out back. What do women do? You go out back. Uh, I guess you'd have to take me. I'll walk you there, yeah? Okay, let's go. Well, what's with the case? It's, it's got my products. Products? You never had a sister, did you? I really do have to go. That's it there. I could take it from here. Um, do you think I could borrow your flashlight? I'm kind of scared of the dark. I guess it would be okay. Thank you. And we fished and hunted, and that's what we lived on. Every little while, he locked me in and went down to the store. Three miles. I'm Dr. Crawford. The general sent me to have a look at Allie. I wasn't told anything about it. No, you weren't. I'll need you to wait outside. It's all right. She's not going to hurt me. when Huck found out Jim never told him it was his father floating in the water. We haven't gotten that far. Spoiled it for you. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I can't stand knowing how something ends. It makes the whole thing seem so pointless. <laughs> it's all right. I just don't have a lot of experience with kids, you know? It's really okay. Kind of guessed something like that was going to happen. Pretty good at that. Kissing? Yeah, sort of. It must be so strange for you. Finding out how strong you are. All the things you can do. It is a little. I frightened you a lot. I'm, I'm sorry. I never meant to scare you. You don't care if you do. That's not really true. I'm not the kind of person who takes pleasure in frightening people, hurting them. But you do it anyway. They're not coming, are they? I don't know. Well, maybe that's for the best. Do you want to go home? Yes. This is something that belonged to my grandfather. Tell me what it says. Read it for me and you can go. 
You can read it, can't you? <laughs> Tell me what it says. What do you want it to say? Oh, don't go little Buddha on me, honey. I don't like it. Pick up the damn thing and read it. Pick it up! There it is. I'd say that now is a very good time for you to tell me what this is all about. This is going to be a little hard to believe. Well, try me. You ever heard of the Roswell crash? You mean that flying saucer thing? My father was half alien. His father was the one survivor of that crash. Our daughter was conceived on board an alien craft. She is of incredible importance to them. A government agency now has her. We don't know why. She told you it was going to be a little hard to believe. I believe every word she said. What are we doing with the girl? I was just getting acquainted. Either one of them tries to leave this area again, shoot off. Is there a problem, Sol? All units target inbound, get ready! Farmhouse. We've got to get her out. Lisa, wait. You go running down there and they're gonna shoot me. I've got to get her out of there. Lisa. Lisa! All batteries report status over! Alpha ready. Bravo ready. Charlie ready. All batteries stand by! Lock on target! Oh, battery fire on my command! 10, 
Nine, eight, seven, sir. Six, what about the little girl? Five, We've got to get her four, at ease, three, sir. At ease, soldier. One, fire. Fall back! Fall back! Fall 